For me, it's just a lifelong dream. It's something that I've been wanting for a long time, and to be fighting again in my hometown means the world to me, especially as a comeback fight. And uh, just having my core fans and people that supported me since day one be there at the fight, man, it means everything. And I won't let this moment go to waste. For Danny, you are coming here to the Dallas area. You're from Philadelphia. It's well documented in football, the rivalry between the Cowboys and the Eagles. Do you relish the opportunity to potentially win these world titles in quote unquote enemy territory? You know, first of all, you know, before I answer your question, you know, I want to thank God for putting me on this stage and having a healthy camp and making it here to Texas, blessed with a great team and a great family. You know, I want to thank Al Heyman, I want to thank Fox, I want to thank the media and everyone who helped make this big event. You know, as far as coming to Texas, Texas has always been great to me. You know, as a prospect, I was I fought here a lot of times, not here in Dallas, but in Houston. And in 2012, um, I won my first world title in uh, Texas, Houston, Texas. So, you know, I have a lot of fans here in Texas and, you know, it's, it's I feel like it's a home away from home. It's a special place for me, you know, because I won my first world title here and I don't look at it like I'm going away. I just look at it like I'm going to handle business. Errol, October 10th, 2019 is a day that you will always remember. It's when you suffered that horrific car accident, and lo and behold, over 14 months later, you're back inside the ring defending your world championships against Danny Garcia on pay-per-view. Can you tell us about the journey that you have experienced over these past 14 months? Man, really just a lot of hard work and a lot of discipline, you know, having my, my family and you know, my parents and my coach and and my day one friends and people just supporting me and just seeing my kids every day. You know, I wanted to get back and, you know, just train hard and stay in the gym and stay focused and, you know, don't let outside distractions get to me. And that's basically, you know, what I did. You know, it was a lot of times, you know, I wanted to give up, I wanted to quit, but you know, just seeing, you know, my loved ones and, you know, not want to let my kids down because when they get older, how I'm going to tell them to keep going when they want to quit at something if I had quit, you know. So when I went to the clinic and went to the doctors and they told me, you know, basically I didn't have any brain swelling or any blood in my brain, anything like that, you know, I decided to continue and to get back. And that's basically what we did. Me and my coach been in the gym since, since probably February and just been grinding hard and you know we to this point and now we back i'm 100 percent i'm ready um he's seen my reaction time he's seen my sparring and you know how i do on the mitts and on the bag and everything's back on point and back to you know to where it was so great and everybody's gonna see you know the same earl spin jr post car accident would you say that the car accident and everything you went through renewed your love for the sport of boxing not that you didn't take it seriously before but did it really open up your eyes on to as to what matters in your life and renew that love for the sport of boxing um i wouldn't say renew any love you know i, I never felt out of love with boxing but i i think it did renew my focus and got me back focused on the things that got me to you know the top of the mountain and that's just being in the gym every day and things like that. Cause at some point I was, you know, after a fight, you know, it started taking a week off to two weeks off to a month off to, you know, basically being in the gym when it was fight time. So, you know, now we've been in the gym, like I said, since February, just grinding hard, you know, staying focused and staying on the grind. And that's what got me to the point that to be unified champion and to get to the mountaintop just being in the gym every day and just grinding. So, you know, I think it really did help me. And especially, you know, just, you know, you realize that, you know, having this time on earth, it's a luxury, you know, and you, you already realize that being this young, you know, you think you're invincible and you think, you know, nothing can happen to you. But when something do happen to you, you know, you just realize, you know, the time is important, especially spending with your family and uh, your loved ones and people that really care about you and that you really care about. So for that standpoint, that's why, you know, I actually moved out of downtown, got a ranch and, you know, got horses and, 
you know, different cattle and things like that and, you know, got a pool and I'm, you know, outside with my kids, enjoying the time with my kids and my family, just had a newborn son and a girlfriend and, you know, just enjoying life more and the people that care about me more than just, you know, all, all the outside influences that and what you'll call distractions. Danny, you've been calling out Errol Spence for over two years now. Now that we are just three days away until you have that opportunity to go ahead and become the first blemish on Errol Spence's dossier, what's going through your mind? Hey, hold on. I'll start with the cat because nobody called me out for two years. Ain't no boxing been calling me out for two years. He did call me out. That was a year, a year ago, but nobody been calling me out for two years. Yeah, I never been a fighter to chase fighters anyway because I feel like I'm the fighter. But I definitely did call him um, a year ago, um, well, a little less than a year ago, and um, the fight was supposed to happen in January. It didn't happen. But you know, like I said, boxing is a sport of timing, and the time is now. I feel great. Had a tremendous camp. You know, I did everything I was supposed to do. Now it's just time to go out there Saturday night and do what I do best and win. Errol, you could have easily, in your comeback fight, in a tune-up. Instead, he wanted Danny Garcia. Why so? Well, we already had the prior agreement that I was going to fight Danny Garcia. You know, nobody forced me to fight Danny Garcia. I could have took a tune-up, but... You know, I wanted somebody dangerous who's going to, you know, keep me focused and, you know, keep me in the gym and train hard. And I had to make sure I was going to be 100 percent on point. If I took a tune off or, you know, somebody that I was supposed to beat, you know, I feel like, you know, that 100 percent, you know, fire wouldn't all the way been there. Of course, I don't want the victory and I don't want to win. But, you know, fighting somebody with a great name like Danny Garcia and a great fighter like Danny Garcia, you know, he just pushed me to another level and pushed me to the level that I'm supposed to be at. Danny, you're the underdog coming into this fight. Does that anger you? Does that upset you? Or is it something that you pay no mind to? I don't pay no mind to that. You know, I've been the underdog in many fights. Um, I just prepare myself. I worry about Danny Garcia training hard. I don't worry about the critics, the media, what they say about me. I know that I'm a great champion, I'm a great fighter, and that's why I'm here today. And um, that's what I'm going to prove Saturday night, that I'm a great champion. Well, speaking of champion, you haven't been a welterweight champion uh, for a few years. How much do you crave, once again, putting gold around your waist? You have that opportunity on Saturday night. Uh, it's a very great opportunity. You know, there's no, there's no um, feeling in the world like winning. And winning a world title is the best feeling in the world. You know, you can't take that for granted. I took it for granted a few times, and, you know, it um, got the best of me. But you know what? In, in this world, you, live off your you learn off your mistakes. You become a better person. You become a better man. And uh, that's why I'm here today. And, Errol, when it comes to your training, your trainer, Derek James, has told me on numerous occasions that you are hitting harder than what you ever have over the course of your professional career. Why is that so? Uh, I don't know. I feel like, I don't know about hitting harder, but I do feel like, you know, I'm sharper than, you know, I ever was. And, you know, I'm making weight easier than I ever did before. And I just feel like, you know, the focus is there. And the focus is there, like, you know, when I started my professional career, when I, to get to this level. So, you know, I just feel like I got a renewed focus and, you know, everything's clicking, and basically I'm eat, sleeping, and pooping. <laughs> <laughs> Boxing. Errol, this is your third straight fight on PBC Fox Sports pay-per-view. What does it mean for you to be headlining a card of this magnitude? Uh, it means everything. Like I said, like I said at the beginning of my career, I used to say all the time on social media, you know, the table turn. You know, a lot of these guys didn't want to let me in. Well, you know, I'm finally in and, um, you know, fighting it on Fox pay-per-view. I feel like that's just the upper echelon. That's where the top fighters are fighting. And for me to get this opportunity over and over, I mean, it's great for me. It's great for my career, and I, and I love it. So I just got to continue to do what I've been doing, and that's winning. Danny, you fought on big cards before, but this is 
the first time that you are headlining on pay-per-view. Does it feel any different? Do, is there any extra added specialness to this opportunity? Yeah, we definitely know what's at stake. You know, we work hard every day in the gym. We push ourselves to the limit. We know this is the biggest stage, but I've been here before many times. You know, I've been headlining fights for eight years straight, you know, at a championship level. So, you know, the only thing that's different is just the pay-per-view. People just got to buy it. But I've always been a top-level fighter, always been fighting at this stage, and I'm just, you know, taking it like another fight. We'll go to your father, your trainer, Angel Garcia. Angel, yesterday you told me on PBC Instagram Live when I asked you about a prediction, you proclaimed to me a seventh-round stoppage for my son, Danny Garcia. Why do you feel that will be the case on Saturday night? Well, because we had a great camp. It's all, we left it in the gym. Everything is done. The job is done, man. We're here. What am I supposed to say? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I got to cheer for, for Danny Garcia. I mean, he's going to go out there and show the world true champions made of. And we've been on pay-per-view before, on the Floyd undercard. It wasn't our car, but it was our own press conference, our own everything with Matisse. So it's not the first time pay-per-view. You know, to the people it is, to us it wasn't. Then he been here before, he done it. He done it before, he gonna do it again. You know what I'm saying? Danny just don't know how to win. He know how to kick your ass. So Angel, does it anger you? Do you feel like Danny doesn't get the respect that he deserves as you see that Danny is the underdog heading into this pay-per-view showdown? Yeah, but it doesn't matter what the people think. At the end of the day, half of the people that write that shit, they never been punched in the tip of the nose. It's just people behind desks, man, making all these calls. Get in the ring. Well, then, well, well, why, don't, why don't they try it? Get in the ring with Danny. I don't want to do it. She, once in a while, he slips and punches me. I feel it in my fat toe. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's easy with the mouth. I could take your money with my mouth. Would I take it, though? It's a different page. Life is, not, hey, listen, man, life is crazy like this. That's why we're living through this, uh, this uh, epidemic right now. Because you know what people fear the most in America? is death. And that's guaranteed. <laughs> Now we'll you know go to saying? we'll go to Derek the bird, James. The bird man's here, uh, brother. The, the bird man. The, the bird man is in the house. Right, so the says Angel Jackson Garcia. Now we'll go to we Derek Derek James, the esteemed trainer of Errol Spence Jr. Derek, when you hear Angel Garcia say he's predicting a seventh round stoppage, obviously he believes in his son and he's behind him 120 percent. They believe they're going to win, but. The specific prediction about a seventh round stoppage. What is your response to that? Well, I want to say first of all is that the respect that they say he doesn't get, I give it to him because I've seen what he's done throughout his career. Secondly, I mean, he, that's I don't know about the knockout and all that. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't make predictions for myself or my guy. And um, he's supposed to believe in himself. He's supposed to believe in what he thinks his son's going to do. Why wouldn't he? And at the same time, we feel the exact same way. I, I don't. I don't go in there and say we're going to get a knockout because I, don't, I, I can't predict any of that, but I can predict that at the end we will be victors. We will win the fight or whatever, but I think that you know he's doing what he's supposed to do. He's supposed to believe in himself. You can't make it to this level and perform on this level consistently and not believe in yourself. So I think that without a doubt that you know it's, it's what it is. We don't have to talk, though. I mean, we, my guy's quiet. I'm quiet. We just, you know... You believe in yourself, you don't have to talk about it. So that's how I feel about it. Well, Arrow has proclaimed that he's in, and I saw him, he looks in impeccable shape. We were down in training camp with both guys. But how has this camp been different? Because I almost feel, and I see in Errol, uh, a different look, a more focus in his eyes. The demeanor is more calculated. Do you feel the same way out of the 2012 Olympian and the current unified welterweight champion in the world? Well, you know, I feel that way exactly. I think at the same time, it's like the level of respect that he talk about that he doesn't get from other people. We give him that respect. And that respect makes us come in harder, and respect makes us train harder, and respect makes him focus even more, but at the same time, he is this guy, he's focused on his task, he's focused on constantly proving that he is the best welterweight in the world. So that's really where the focus comes from. So you see, basically what I would say, like the eye of the tiger, is because you see him 
on his grind, constantly working out nonstop, and you see the fire in his eyes. And that's what that's what it really is. So it's not so much about um, all the other things. It's about his focus. It's about his respect for himself, respect for Danny Garcia in the game, and how you know respect makes you be people. Respect keeps you honest, and that's what you see is honesty. We go back to Danny Garcia. Danny, your father told me that he anticipates there'll be moments in the fight where it will be a toe-to-toe -to -toe battle. How have you gotten yourself prepared mentally and physically for those kind of exchanges on Saturday night against Errol Spence Jr.? You know, working in the gym, working in the gym, working on all kinds of stuff, working on boxing, working on banging it out, working on moving, walking them down. So, you know, we worked on everything. So at this level, you got to be able to do everything. You just can't go in there think you're going to slug it out and it'll be a whole different story. So we definitely prepared for a lot of things. That's why we had different sparring partners. We had guys who come at us. We had young guys who move all types of styles. So we'd be prepared for Saturday night. Errol, for you, what are you hoping to prove on Saturday night against Danny Garcia on Fox Sports PBC pay-per-view? I mean, the only thing I'm going to prove that, you know, I'm still the same. I, you know, and I'm, I'm a realist. I'm realistic. I know people, you know, have a lot of questions. Am I still the same? Am I shelling myself? And if I would have looked at the accident and somebody would have had, I would have said the same thing, too. And I would have had questions, too. So, you know, that's basically, you know, the questions that need to be answered. And I feel like that wouldn't have been answered if I would have fought, you know, a light, lighter competition. So I feel like, you know, a lot of stuff will be answered come December 5th that people have that haven't been in the gym need to see. So, you know, I just expect for myself to be 100% on point, sharp, and, uh, you know, just accurate with my shots. Danny, what do you want to tell Errol Spence as we are just three days away until your welterweight showdown? And also, in a perfect world, how does this fight end? You know, it's not really much to say. You know, all the hard work is done. You know, you can say what you want to say. I know I'm here in Texas and I'm ready, you know, for the fight of my life. I'm ready for whatever. And um, come Saturday night, I will be victorious. Errol, in a perfect world, how does the fight end? Well, the fight ends by me winning. And life taught me that this world is not perfect. So, <laughs> so ain't nothing going to be perfect. But I'm definitely going to get the win and the victory. Thank you very much, gentlemen. We greatly appreciate it. Good luck on Saturday night. Thank you. Now Errol Spence Jr. and Danny Garcia will have the ceremonial stare down. And Joe, my goodness, what in press conference here in Dallas. Both men seem focused, determined, and they are locked in. I bear witness there's only one God, Allah, and Muhammad is his final messenger. That's why I said, Larry, on the Bungu fight, thanking you. They call me the problem, but you could call me the can man, because anybody can get it. Africans, Americans, Dominicans, Mexicans, anybody can get it.